What's up guys, Chris here from Mainly Mesh. Gonna be talking about shapes of shafts and how it relates to their strengths, blah, blah, blah. We had a cool intro for this. It's lost somewhere on my, on my computer. I'm gonna try to find that. Sorry, Tab, I'll get on that. But kinda wanted to, to clear some of the confusion about this whole idea of strength to weight ratio and then simultaneously helping explain to you guys some of the awesome characteristics of this never before sold Project G shaft that we are lucky enough to get our hands on a few of these and you'll be seeing a lot more about this but we're gonna be putting a few up for sale in about a week or so. Huge thank you to Universal Lacrosse. Like I said, you're gonna be seeing a bunch more about this but we're gonna start diving into what this product means and why it's such a special unique product as a way of explaining to you guys some of these strength to weight ratio issues. So the first misconception with strength, strength to weight ratio is that, okay, my shaft has a high strength to weight ratio. That means if I knock it against a pole, it's not going to break. Usually when people are testing strength to weight ratio, it's, it's some form of say, you know, putting a shaft on two cinder blocks and loading weight in the middle, middle until it caves in. Um, Obviously, that's a that's a very crude example. We, you know, it might be another. You know, you have a, a stationing point in the middle and putting the weights on the outside. Blah blah blah. But it's it's usually a more gradual stress. Obviously, a lot of these facilities have much more complicated testing procedures than that. But it, it can be. It's usually something where a gradual increase in force is applied instead of a dramatic slash to a stick um, in different angles. You know, most shafts are gonna be stronger if you're putting the weight this way where the head would be flat because there's more material. It's an inch diameter one way and not quite an inch in the other. Um, or an inch and a half, whatever it is. So, so that's, but also a strength to weight ratio. <coughs> yeah. Can vary drastically depending on the weight of the shaft so so you have to keep in mind that if we're comparing a four ounce shaft and a seven ounce shaft the four ounce shaft is almost half the weight of the seven ounce shaft so say that a four ounce shaft has the same strength to weight ratio as a seven ounce shaft but the seven ounce shaft only holds 300 pounds of force right now that if the 400 if the four ounce shaft has the same strength to weight ratio, it might only hold 170, 180 pounds of force, which a lot of you high school guys are gonna be able to bench. And that's basically saying that you could crack it over a pole by just pushing on it. So it might have the same strength to weight ratio as a titanium shaft, but the titanium shaft is two ounces heavier, so it doesn't mean anything, it's not a strong shaft. So that's the one thing you have to keep in mind. But then where the Project G shaft gets kind of cool is so it has a strength to weight ratio that is four times greater than that of the gate ice. I used the gate ice forever for probably six years, definitely snapped a few. So it didn't have the best strength to weight ratio. Let's just put a casual estimate on it and say that it was able to sustain, I don't know. I was I was decently strong. I'll give I'll be generous and give myself 200 pounds, but let's call it 150. If this is a four times stronger shaft, now we're looking at about 600 pounds of force that we can apply to this shaft without it breaking. So a four time increase, although it's not you know a thousand times stronger like you might see in some crazy aerospace commercial, a four times four time increase in the strength to weight ratio of a shaft is an enormous difference, especially considering the fact that this shaft, <clears throat> excuse me, is 5.1 ounces. It's very light. It has an incredibly structurally sound geometry, which is what, I think I might cut this video into two videos. Yeah, that'll make a lot of sense. So this was part one, which has to do with what is strength to weight ratio. And next video, I'm gonna tie I'm gonna talk about what it means to have a structurally sound geometry in the shaft and how the geometry of the shaft increases strength to weight ratio as well. Thanks so much.
catch you guys in like two seconds when you click on the next video because this is so interesting.